Hey coaches, Coach B here, man, with another uh, double wing, gun wing content for you on here on a Saturday. So uh, I wanted to basically uh, just give you a little background of um, the sweep with the double wing versus the gun wing. So one of the things when I became a double wing coach and uh, for the for the you know pretty much the beginning when I just came out of the gate, I was in I was in single uh, double tight double wing. Uh, basically all the time until I went to the gun wing and one of the reasons I wanted to go to the gun wing was because uh, I couldn't really find a really really effective sweep out of the double tight double wing I mean maybe I was doing it wrong or something but uh, when I first got uh, introduced um, to uh, Coach Murphy, Coach Tim Murphy from, uh, out, he coaches out here in Concord, California, and he was running this offense at the high school level, and the first time I ever saw a Trojan sweep, I just kind of knew um, that I had to kind of get that into my system. So today I wanted to do a video that is only focused on this, the, the Trojan sweep. Now also you'll see on the screen, um, I'm aligned in my gun wing formation, which is my full back to the right, my wing to the right, my quarterback is at 3.5 yards, and my running back is lined up behind the backside tight end four yards deep. So that's pretty much the alignment of anybody, of everybody. Um, every Trojan sweep I ran uh, in this season in 2016, I'd really only run 27, and I'll kind of get into why I did that and so on and so forth. So after just kind of talking a little bit through Trojan Sweep to kind of, you know, get all the coaches that run this system or run my system out there um, to, to get your Trojan Sweep to be the, one of the most devastating plays in your attack. So I'm a huge film guy, so I figured that this would be the best way to do it. So I went through YouTube um, with my videos and I picked out my 10 favorite Trojan Sweeps. And I'm just gonna kind of kind of talk through through them all, and kind of have you guys understand my my coaching thoughts. And, you know, when when I was running this play, um, sorry about that, blank my screen. Um, so I just want to kind of run, you know, you know, run you guys through to make sure that your Trojan powers, maybe you know, I'm sorry, maybe your Trojan sweeps that they aren't working. After this video, I think you guys can, you know, definitely put the grease on your Trojan sweep and understand what, how and why this play can work in this system. Um, so first of all, number one, I come out in this formation in, in the gun wing and I'll come, I, I was 50-50 at first with this 2016, I, 2016 team, I would come out 50% of the time in UC uh, standard double tight double wing and then about 50% of the time I come out in this formation which is my gun wing formation last year I coached for the Solano Ravens shout out to the Solano Ravens um, and I went to only gun so this was my only formation I also had gun left where I would switch these kids over here uh, and everyone would just flip flop and then I also had uh, a eagle heavy package which is basically like a direct snap package where my quarterback moves to stacked behind this would be the fullback right here. But what I do is I move my fullback to the shotgun. I bring the quarterback basically up to stack behind the three back. And the three back will basically be where the four back used to be. And they just kind of, you know, they, they, they know that they have to switch uh, roles and responsibilities. So number one, this is my formation I would come out in, say, you know, 100% of the time in 2022 or 50% of the time in 2015, 2016. And I, would, I wouldn't run this Trojan sweep until I, be, until I just feed them 34 power. So you can tell they're kind of aligned, like kind of weird. They're, this is the Sac Raiders. They always come out with like weird defenses and stuff. Um, so they have three guys like pretty much outside my tight end. Um, so I'm just going to run through the play and just kind of like, uh, you know, have you guys understand that I wouldn't run this play till I had fed them 30, you know, a lot of 34 power in this range. Cause you know, we're heavy to this side. There's my three back, you know, a, st a standard 34 power. I'm just feeding them that a lot to set them up for Trojan sweep. So the first thing I'm going to discuss is polar depth. So whenever my, whenever my kids come off the line, basically they are going to pull into the backfield. That's one thing I see with a lot of people's problems with Trojan Sweep. You have to make sure now, number one, my pullers, both of my guards are pulling, okay? Both of my guards are pulling and they're going deep outside to run this, basically this big question mark out here. Their goal is to get outside leverage on any kid that is not stuck inside this box, Okay, so one of the keys for for this for this 
play to run, okay, is number one, your tight end on play side has to make a reach block on this kid right here who it looks like the defensive end. He's in a position like a defensive end would be aligned, okay? You have to block this kid. This tight end is responsible for this block, okay? So he's going to step out in a reach block and he's going to try to pin this kid inside by, by at, at all costs, okay? So the first thing is polar depth. Now, as soon as I snap the ball, you're going to see my pullers, okay? All my pullers pull, okay? You see my pullers pull. Now, this is my backside tight end. This is my fullback. This is my backside guard. This is my play side guard. Now, one rule I have for my, for my guys, if you're not pulling, you are cutting, okay? That's the rule. So if you're whoever is not pulling, I, I repeat with my kids, if you're not pulling, you're cutting. As you can tell, my lineman went down in the front to just basically reduce any penetration that gets through from having like one, two, three kids on the line pulling a fullback, okay? Now, one thing I'm also going to discuss uh, is, uh, again, puller depth. You want your pullers to get away from the line of scrimmage. So what I have the pullers do is a Trojan pull, which takes them about one to two yards uh, back into the backfield so that, so that they can get around this corner, okay? Um, the center's rule on this play is, uh, he is going to be cutting, okay, because he's not a puller. The center is not pulling. And his his cut rule is mop, M-O-P, man on or play side. That's the guy he's cutting. Play side meaning if we're running a 27 Trojan, which, which this is, play side would be any guy that was over here on like the left side, like a, a guy in the, in the A gap on his left side. He's cutting that guy, okay? A um, couple other things. Uh... High speed ball exchange, okay? So my quarterback currently has, he's, he's like getting the ball right here. This is a high speed ball exchange. My quarterback is running full speed at him and he is running full speed at the, at the ball, okay? Um, after the ball exchange, this needs to be a good fake by your quarterback, okay? It has to be a good fake. As you can tell, see how my pullers are establishing depth? My play side guard is trying to establish leverage, okay, on this guy. Now, one key to thing is that, one key thing is that my three back, what he does um, is he basically does a uh, like a, a a check with me, okay. It's basically the tight end reach block and the running back combo checkup, okay. What he does is when he as soon as the ball is snapped, my three back is taught to watch the play side tight end to ensure that he has the defensive end pinned inside, which as you can see, he does. My kid's helmet is on the play side, you know, where kid does not want to be. Therefore, my three back will check up to the next guy, which is probably this corner. And he's going to try to get outside leverage on this corner to, to allow the posse to come around the corner, okay? Also, you notice, I'm calling this play on fourth and five. And I'm on my own, like, 30... I'm on my own 36 yard line and I'm not punting because I know Trojan will go every time. And this is a really good Trojan. This went for a touchdown. Okay. So uh, let's just get into it. Um, my three back. So my three back again, he, he notices that the, t the tight end has it. The tight end does not need any help. Okay. So he checks up to the next guy. Now we roll this out a little, little further. Now, good fake by the quarterback. Again, the quarterback has to fake. 55 is now looking at the quarterback because he's not sure if he still has the ball. That's all it takes. And then this kid right here kind of also, you know, gets caught. Now, these kids are usually outside linebacker corner. They're not usually the best tacklers on the team. But look at them start to basically backpedal as they see the posse coming. And we're setting it up. All right. Here's my three back. This is my full back. This is my backside tight end. Now, shout out to my backside tight end. This kid, number 24, is named Curtis, okay? I had him in 2015 and 2016. And shout out to, to Curtis, man. Uh, we hooked up on Instagram. I still love that kid to this day. Every time, I'm a huge film guy again. And the more film that I watched on this kid, Kamani Curtis, uh, it blows my mind. He was one of the most self, self, selfless players on the team. Um, he he didn't really like blocking like at first but he was an athlete at tight end i also had another kid at uh, tight end called named elfman which is a he was a tall white kid and a uh, great kid now 
that that gets me into key positions for this play to work. So if you have two really good tight ends, you are going to be really, really effective with this play, okay? You don't have to have big linemen. If you have two mobile guards, the, the, the better your guards are, the better this play is going to work. And the faster they are, the better this play is going to work. They don't have to be the best kids, but if you have athletes at guards, you will want to put, put them in there. Um, also, like my pullers, when it comes back to Curtis, pulling with authority. You see how he's in front of my two back? This kid is hopefully the fastest kid on your on my team or your guys' team out there in, in you know, youth football land. This kid should be your fastest kid, okay? So the blocks are set up. You see all my kids getting outside leverage. My three back is now outside of basically the box, which is where he wants to be. He, he kind of comes in, pins a kid inside. That's what he does. Now the full back and, the, and my backside tight end are the only two blockers left that aren't caught up doing other things. This is my probably one of my guards. Yeah, that's a guard right there. And just the posse comes through, block sets up. Curtis gets Curtis gets blown up in this play, but regardless, he he the key the key block it was there. Um, all right, so that went for a touchdown. So now here's another uh, Trojan. I'll just kind of coach up. And again, um, you all the things I just said: high speed ball exchange, pulling with authority. Um, one thing is runner's vision and kind of seeing the lane and running behind his blocks. Another thing that's going to make you effective with this Trojan sweep is that this kid. This kid, the bet, the more patient of a runner he is, he has the burner speed, but you can't outrun your block. So if this kid is just so fast, he's just outrunning all your linemen, understand that he has to learn to be patient. This is a patient run. The lane will set up. Now, um, this is another Trojan. Um, this is one of my, you know, one of my top 10 Trojans. This is uh, at, at 158 on my video. Now, this this is a really good Trojan because you're going to notice, again, from it's from this side, this is Elfman right here. They're in a really weird, like, who knows who defense but they got a lot of kids in the line everyone's standing up doesn't matter this kid has to make a reach block on like this kid right here this is a corner I, these guys i don't know what kind of defense they're playing but this looks like a defensive end doesn't matter make he steps outside now the only guy he's able to get is to this guy right here he's not able to get to this guy which is fine because my three back this kid right here now checks up, and this is this becomes his kid. This kid steps inside for some reason, but it doesn't matter. My three back comes down. Now my three back has leverage on him, and here comes the posse around the corner. Okay, look at look look at Curtis with his arm out, distancing him, distancing himself from uh, from the fullback. This is a pulling guard, and this is my runner, Ladarius Ag, one of the fastest kids probably in that league this in that year. Comes around the corner, fullback, comes around. Here comes Kamani Curtis down, like down this side, lead blocking and just just crushes a kid. Like get off me, by, break a you know make one guy miss. Um, so that was one of also one of my favorites. Um, so on that play, you know, you guys have to understand it's almost like eleven versus eight football. Like coming back, uh, you know, coming back here to one fifty eight. Like, this kid is not in play for this. I mean, this may be, like, 11 versus 10. But honestly, since we're chopping a lot of kids at the line, now, when I cut, I really don't like to go at kids' knees. I like to tell my kids to basically turn laterally and basically make a coffee table in the middle of the field. You'll kind of see it on this play as they cut. See how they go down and they go to the side? And then they just they just wipe out the kids. Like, see, there's a, <laughs> there's a big pile of like bodies right here okay because you don't want penetration to to get into the backfield but that's why your pullers are pulling deep on that trojans on that trojan pull should be about three yards deep in the backfield okay all right so moving on um we're gonna go to 342 here's 342 all right, another Trojan sweep. You can see my pullers, Evan pulling away from the line. It looks like we were not cutting. Maybe we try to cut. Um, but it, again, there's only one kid outside the, outside the perimeter. If your lead blockers understand that they need to get outside of this kid's leverage, then this play goes for a touchdown. See, he tries to get outside. My, this is my pulling guard that is still assaulting that kid. And then all lane sets up. He has to cut.
Bada dang. Lord, look at this. Yeah, it hit me the wrong button. Okay, so. All right, so again, the, 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 the combo block, 11 versus eight football, um, you know, having the high speed exchange, these are all things that you want to have, you know, in your Trojan suite for this, for this, to, for this play to be good. All right, let me go to uh, 514. Okay, against a different team. This is kind of a more on ground level. They're actually in a, you know, a more conventional defense now. Um, you can see my pullers pulling deep. Everyone's pulling away. This is my three back getting outside leverage on whoever is left. Look at that, he comes in, boom. Beautiful, beautiful block, pins him inside. Full back still out here. Two back making some good cuts. All right. This is another Trojan. This was against the Sac Ducks in 2016. Um, pullers pull. Everyone's gone. Good fake by the quarterback. Caravan comes around. The people are starting to set up their blocks. Some kids don't know what's going on. Uh, there was actually there was actually like a fight in that in that on that play. Um, 843 all right now so this one this one is probably pretty much the you know one I'm, one I'm going to end with before I show uh, uh, Trojan keep so on this play basically we were on the five again I set this play up by throwing them a lot of 34 power to this side they're in a good defense I mean they got a standing defensive end on this side they got one two three four five five down linemen so they're in like a like kind of like a sick quasi six two their safety is back here he's not really a factor I mean this kid is seven yards off the ball so he's kind of a factor but against the run again coaches think about this as 11 versus eight football so they're they're kind of they're kind of tight you know they're, they're looking at how compressed I am versus them okay and then all I do is just see the reach block reach block on this side by my uh, by my place uh, place side tack place side tight end comes in my three and he, he's he's kind of got him the defensive end didn't really do nothing he's got outside leverage on him he's not going anywhere so my three back again does the running back to you know tight end check 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 up checks up to the next guy this guy steps inside and just kind of gives up the play doesn't really realize where the ball is and at that point it's a wrap um, going back to like pulling with authority. Um, this play is, is kind of big on that. So when you when you see when you see my backside guards pulling outside the center, you also notice how recessed my line is. My center is way out in front. Okay, you can't even see my center because he's like way up here. Um, that's another big factor on making this play work. So coaches out there, if you guys are if you guys are tightly, um, if your guys' guards are crowding your center, um, it's not going to be this play is not going to be as effective. So what you want to do is you want to get your linemen as legally far back as they can be, uh, all in a straight line. They all have to be straight line, foot to foot, shoulder width stance. You want a nice compressed line. But your center, give give your guards, give your center about three inch splits between him and your guards, and then set your guards' feet back. Their toes should be about eight to 12 inches behind the center's heels. The rule is that their face mask has to crawl across the belt line of the center when they're in a three-point stance. So this is a legal formation. But what it does is it moves the defensive line so much further back. They're not allowed to crowd your pullers. And like on this play, as soon as the ball is snapped, look at my pullers. Okay, my pullers all get away clean. This is the play side guard, backside guard, full back, uh, backside tight end, okay? Backside tight end is, is, is super, he's super fast off the ball. A little slow on that play. You can tell the runner's kind of out in front of him. But it doesn't matter because they were just completely, with this Trojan sweep, you're just looking to outflank your opponent. So, you know, speed is of the essence. Um, okay, so before I go, I want to show uh, kind of one more um, little, you know, little, little deal about uh, Trojan sweep. So, if you're noticing backside pursuit to your, uh, if you're noticing some backside pursuit to your Trojan, so right here, sorry, I let that run, run for a second. So if you notice any backside backside pursuit to your Trojan, 
Uh, I run a play called 27 Trojan Keep, which is basically telling the quarterback he's going to run 27 Trojan, but he's going to keep the ball. He's just going to fake the handoff. And what we were noticing is this kid right here who was good, he was an athlete, he was timing up our snap count, and he was just flying straight in and trying to tackle this kid from behind. So I just called 27 Trojan Keep, and we ran it. And every the line runs 27 Trojan Sweep. You just don't hand the ball off. <laughs> Pullers all go. Defensive end crashes. Uh, this actually this actually play ended up going for us quite a bit of yards. Um, but yeah, so that's it, man. So these are a lot. These are a lot of the things that need like the key points. The key points to uh, getting your Trojan Sweep to work good. And uh, I always appreciate the support, man. So hope you guys enjoy the video. See you.